Hey everyone, I'm Zenith Priest, and welcome to my introduction for Heart of the Wildfire, where I'll give you insight into the nature of this spirit and show you how to drive off the invaders by turn 5. Wildfire is a high-complexity offense spirit that also utilizes control and fear. As they get more powerful, lands will blight from its very presence, but they also have the ability to restore the land. This balance lies at the heart of Wildfire's choices, as some blight in our lands is necessary to be effective. We start with 3 presence and 2 blight in the highest sands. This gives us a good base to operate from, and we can sacrifice or destroy that extra presence while still keeping a sacred site. Our blazing presence deals damage equal to our fire whenever we add or move presence. Initially, this is great for picking off lone explorers, but we'll want to be careful in revealing a second fire as we'll start blighting the land with no immediate way to reverse the effect other than removing the blight afterwards. We also push out all beasts and may push any to haunt in that land, possibly setting up counterattacks or other shenanigans. With such a destructive nature, Wildfire is invulnerable to its lands blighting from any spirit's actions, most notably their own blazing presence. Our growth options start with a standard reclaim while gaining a power and an energy. In addition to refueling our hand, if the island starts looking grim, this may be our only option to keep the island from blighting beyond repair. The middle option grants a new power and places presence at range, and the last one places a presence nearby while gaining an extra energy for each fire revealed. Which option we choose will depend on which track we follow. Both tracks start with fire, with each presence revealing gains until a second firewall near the end. Considering our blazing presence, we're going to want to pick one track or the other until we're ready to start blighting lands. For this introduction, we're going to look at the bottom track because this gives us a couple pathways to clean up light if necessary. As such, we're going to lean on the last growth option more in order to fuel our expensive powers. Our innate powers begin with Firestorm, needing Leaf to do damage and Fire increasing that damage. A single Leaf deals half damage and three deals full damage equal to your Fire. With a couple air, we can split that damage, and with 7 fire, we can destroy everything after pushing the Tahan to safety, though that's a little outside the scope of this introduction. Note that this power can only be used in our blighted lands, even when we're splitting damage. The bird land regrows lets us restore our lands, providing a way to mitigate our destructive ways. At 4 fire minimum, this won't happen until turn 3, but will certainly be useful once it does. For our unique powers, Flame's Fury grants target spirit an energy and an extra damage to each of their damage dealing powers. Useful and fairly straightforward. Threatening Flames protects one of our blighted lands, gaining fear and pushing out non-city invaders. If we've managed to trap the invaders with no way to escape our presence, instead we add extra fear. Just be sure you have other ways to deal with them when the ravage comes. Asphyxiating Smoke gains fear, destroys a town, and pushes the Dahan at range 2 from a sacred site. Controlling the Dahan mitigates any counterattack, but otherwise it's pretty solid. Flash Fires adds a fear and deals a damage to a nearby land. A bit expensive, even with the ability to make it fast, but it does a good job early game of mitigating incoming explorers so they don't get out of hand. Combined with Flame's Fury, we could also let an explorer build to take out the town. Putting all this together, our basic strategy will be to pick off lone explorers with our presence, removing them from the bottom track to facilitate blight removal. Our slow power should let us get ahead enough to place at least one presence in a blighted land before we start blighting ourselves, so don't worry if we let one of the first waves blight, as we can come back to it later. Firestorm combined with Flame's Fury, in addition to the damage from our presence, makes for quite the destructive turn. And with that, let's get started on a demo game. As a high complexity spirit, there's no supported power progression, and I've disabled the expansions to simplify our decisions during play. Alright, let's begin. Turn 1. The explorers start out in the wetlands. Taking out the city before it blights is possible, but requires a lot of resources. Instead, let's come back to it later, and since we'll already be blighted, we should be in a better position. Since we're going to be taking presents from the bottom track, we'll need the last growth option to be able to play our more expensive powers. If you're on a board where you don't start out this centralized and can't reach the initial explorer, it's okay to grab a minor power now, looking for fire and leaf, and playing threatening flames if you don't find something better. 
we'll just need to make sure we're gaining energy the next couple turns. Here we can reach by gaining energy, and we'll want to play Asphyxiating Smoke to chip away at land 6 after it builds. Even if the town hadn't explored, consider destroying it anyway, rather than the town that built, especially if that could lead to an isolated board. Turn 2. The invaders explored into the jungles, and with the Dahan able to resolve one and our presence the other, we can take a smaller turn now to allow for a more powerful turn 3. Taking from the last option again, we'll open up two card plays and place the presence in land 4. Generally, look to place presence into blighted lands now while you can before you start blighting yourself. After grabbing our energy, let's play just flash fires, allowing us to pick off one of the next explorers. If the explorers pick on some of your weak points, adding Flame's Fury could help you deal with a town that builds because you couldn't quite reach it now. With the wetlands blighting and the upper jungle building, the explorers venture into the sands. Use flash fires on the coast, and then we'll proceed. Turn 3. Like the last two turns, there's a couple of different options we've got. If our board looks fairly clean, we could opt to use our last gross option again, which should secure us enough energy to grab a major power on the reclaim. Since we're letting our island blight a couple times, grabbing a minor power now and opening up three card plays will let us start removing the blight, keeping us in a more comfortable position. Finding fire will be critical for this, unless we start blighting ourselves to give us the missing fire. We could do that, placing a presence in the jungle to destroy the town, since it's blighting anyway, but then we'll miss out on being able to clear the wetland city, so let's hold off on that if we can. While less critical, a zero-cost fire will let us use both of our expensive powers next turn if necessary. Gift of Power and Gift of Constancy both lack fire, so neither of them will work this turn, though if you picked a power turn 1, Gift of Constancy would be pretty good for turn 2, likely netting positive energy and gaining back a unique power. Elemental Boon will give us our elements, including air, which helps achieve a higher tier for Firestorm. Shadows of the Burning Forest adds fear in one of our lands with invaders, and pushes an explorer and town if we target a jungle or forest. The extra fear is nice, but we only have presence in the single jungle, we'll probably reclaim next turn, and won't be able to place presence down in a relevant land. So we take Elemental Boon this time to cement our elements. Our last presence before blighting goes in the wetlands, damaging the city, then playing our hand. Elemental Boon gives us a fourth fire and a third leaf, allowing us to do full fire damage. Flame's Fury adds to that, along with an energy, easily facilitating the destruction of all wetland invaders and gaining our first fear card. Threatening Flames pushes the explorer to the only safe place and leaves us just shy of another fear card. Dahan on their guard keeps the jungle from blighting, and with nowhere to build, the invaders explore back into our jungles. When cleaning up Blight, consider where the action is. Unless we need to make room for Cascading Blight, or need to clear a land to place presence down without Cascading, we'd rather clean Blight where there's not likely to be invaders in our lands. Here, our sands or wetlands are good picks, and since this game will be easy to remove single Blight, let's remove the double Blight from our sands. Turn 4. With no cards in hand, we first want to take a quick look at our win condition. Because we can deal damage with our presence, sometimes that's all we need to achieve victory. The city is a little too large for us to destroy right now, and it wouldn't be enough to trigger Terry level 2, so we reclaim. If you've been able to use the last growth option every turn, or otherwise find yourself with enough energy, here's a good opportunity to grab a major power. Purifying Flame is everything Wildfire needs. Versatility with either damage or removing blight, and all of our elements. Since the other powers have fire, let's briefly consider them anyway. Drought is a solid choice if you're not blight and verse, destroying a few towns for the trouble. With Flame's Fury and Elemental Boon, we could even hit the threshold to take out a city. Steam Vent's threshold is harder for us to reach, but the fire and air make it a decent pick, and we could pair it with flash fires and potentially clean up a few problems all at once. Call to Bloodshed is a good thematic pairing for Wildfire, being friendly with the Dahan and all. A strategic presence placement and a little planning can go a long way with this power. 
Any of these are solid choices for their own reasons, but Purifying Flame still wins out. We do want to reach for tier level 2, but other than that, we're just biding our time, so our plays aren't as important. We could probably get away with just threatening flames, pushing the jungle explorer into the coastal sands, but we also have room for Purifying Flame to clean up some. Flash fires would clear the next wave, but again, we're not really too worried at this point as long as we play threatening flames. With Elemental Boom, we see a third leaf and the ability to split Firestorm's damage, showing what could be possible if we were under more pressure. Dahan and Hartin can move a Dahan away from or into invaders, but we'll skip that. And as the invaders wrap up their turn, exploring into the coastal wetlands, let's clean up some blight before proceeding. Turn 5. Destroying the lone city gives us the fear we need to hit the next terror level and claim victory. Grabbing the last growth option gives us the energy to play our hand if necessary, and opening up the fire from the top track lets us start gaining passive energy next turn, allowing us to focus more on gaining powers. Some final thoughts on Heart of the Wildfire. If your starting sands has the town, consider playing Flame's Fury turn 1 rather than Asphyxiating Smoke. However, if that's the land that explores, gain a power and place a presence in the other sands, and play Threatening Flames to push the town into the Blighted Land if possible, and destroy the Explorer with Firestorm. Keep in mind that Firestorm and Threatening Flames requires your lands to be blighted. Cleaning the land before you're done can make things complicated. Waiting to reveal your second fire until you have two card plays means that you can at least start cleaning up the same turn, keeping the Blight count in equilibrium. Alright everyone, that's all I've got this time. Hope you gain some insight, and good luck in your next games.